Hello, and welcome to another edition of All or Not According to Jack with your host, Jack Toledano. Yes, I am sporting my Guinness shirt straight from the Guinness factory in Dublin, Ireland. Wonderful, wonderful place out of very many wonderful places that I visited when I was in Ireland uh, well, over a month now. Wow. I miss it so much. Such a great place. Anyway, that we're not here to talk about Ireland. We're here to talk tonight about a product of Great Britain. Uh, and more specifically, these guys. Let me, if I can find it. So Judas Priest announced that they would be um, putting out a new album come March called Invincible Shield. So uh, I already had uh, uh, some bad vibes about that. Uh, I'm not a very patient person. I don't like to wait. And asking me to wait five freaking months is maybe even five and a half, six months is, I think, unreasonable. Not to mention they did this once before with the album Demolition. Uh, similar thing where you had to wait a bunch of months it came out and it wasn't that good so there's that um, so so now what they've done was they've uh, they've released a single and that kind of I mean we're, we're gonna go into the song uh, but when they released Nostradamus basically what they did was they they released that ahead of the album, and they released the title track. And you know what? I, f at least for me, it gave me a, a basically a false sense of, uh, oh, this is going to be great, because the song Nostradamus is probably one of the best songs on the album. But then when the album came came out, it tanked. I mean, not so much because I disliked it, but many Priest fans disliked it, and it, you know, it tanked so bad that. They basically didn't play anything from the album on the tour. They they played the first song, Prophecy, which was basically it. And I think in certain shows they also played Death. Uh, but they did not play the title track, which they, you know, they put out there for the whole world to see and get excited about. So the question is, should I really get excited about this? But uh, also... Uh, I'm going to do something that I've never done before and Pete Pardo swears against. It This is going to be something of a, of a reactionary video because, you know what, I kind of have to play certain snippets of it for you to really understand what I'm talking about. So, let's share. Uh, where is it? Uh, okay. So... Oh, way to go. There it is. Let's start this thing. Ah, they even give you the lyrics and everything. And that amazing, very fancy font. So right there, I'm not too crazy about that instrumentation. It sounds a little too much like turbo. So let's continue. So, the riff starting to sound for me already like firepower. So basically, it's, you know, sounds nice, but it's a bit of a used riff, uh, or, or a reused riff. I 
again, turbo. The clamor and the clatter of incense. Interesting. <laughs> Sounds a little too much like firepower. Uh, I wish I could say that I'm a little more excited, but really not. So that's kind of a cross between firepower and painkiller for me. So yeah, these are reused riffs. I mean, you know, we'll talk about it a little more after once I uh, cut away from this screen, uh, the share screen. But let's l give you a little bit more of a listen here. <laughs> So where he says, panic attack, panic attack. I mean, that's a little, that's no different than, say, Aerosmith's uh, song, Toys in the Attic. It's like, you come up with this verse, and then you have this chorus that, almost, almost like they're unrelated. That, that that's the whole, how would you say, tells the whole story. Just, just the chorus, which doesn't tell you why he's having a panic attack, but... I mean, if if you believe those lyrics, I guess I can understand. Let's continue. As the deadheads gladly suffer sins while euthanizing then begins. So from that, I'm supposed to get a panic attack? Ugh. That, I'm sorry, that's, that smells too much like painkiller to me. Which was a great song, but you know, you know what? Um, let's so let's break out of here for a minute. Stop sharing. Okay, I'm back from the commercial break. I had to go grab another video, so uh, let's go to it. Uh, where is it? So I was expecting to listen to this, not something. Nice video, by the way. I'm really enjoying Listen to that riff. That's what I was hoping to hear from the priest. And, you know, sorry to say, guys, it looks like KK beat you out. Uh, instead, you got this. A, re a recycled riff. This. See, this bridge definitely sounds like painkiller, which, you know what, may not be a bad thing, but. I wasn't looking to hear the whole song basically played over again. You, you take two songs, put them together uh, with, with the uh, the introduction of Turbo, and that's what you have. So, or granted, Mr. KK is not breaking any new ground here. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is more powerful than uh, than Panic Attack. Uh, this is something that I would want me to, to, to give me a Panic Attack. And you know what? You know, you want to criticize him, but... Uh, 
Oh, there we go. He is, he is the, you know, he's got the goods. Tim Ripper Owens. He, uh, you know what? He's the real deal. Sounds great. He still sounds great. KK even sounds great. AJ Mills, I guess he was brought in because, you know what? He's got, he can play some of those leads that KK can't play, although KK writes most of the songs. I think this was the one song that AJ Mills got some writer's credit, but this is what I was expecting to hear. Not this. So we can stop sharing. So, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't want to get to a place where we're now we're, we're um, how would you say, we're, we're, we're doing reviews of individual songs. I was hoping for the album to come out, but hello. We got to go through the snows of winter first before we see this album. I probably will buy it, even though I no longer have a CD player. Who knows? Maybe I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do another contest where somebody can win it. But we'll see. But uh, you know, for for a, a band that basically ignores KK Downing and doesn't want to know him anymore, and he comes out and he he puts out a bet. Uh, what so far sounds like it's going to be a better album than what you put out. That's a problem, man. Uh, all I can do is pray that when the album comes out, it's it's going to be better than, uh, um, you know, KK's Priest. Um, so uh, I will be uh, giving you a, a review of that album uh, in time as well. I'm just running a little behind schedule, but I hope you enjoyed this concept. Uh, it's funny. Uh, they, the Beatles just released uh, a new song also, so I guess I'm going to have to review that as well because there are people up on Facebook that are um, asking uh, what you think of that. So uh, I'd like to strike while the iron's hot for the, for that one. I, I missed the boat on this by at least a w couple weeks, but uh, I don't know, three out of five I'd give this. Uh, I hope it'll grow on me, but so far it hasn't. This is Jack Taldano, speaking for all and not according to Jack. Uh, be well, everybody. And I hope you're not too pissed off at me because I still love the priest. I hope I don't get any copyright warnings, but, you know, hello. Uh, I thought about this before I started to record. I mean, I've seen them ten times, the most I've ever seen anybody. Never got comped into any one of their shows. I paid my way into every show. I mean, I have been comped for Kiss, and, you know, uh, I think I got comped for, was it the Moody Blues? A couple of shows at Jones Beach. Got comped a few times many years ago when I wrote for uh, Pete Pardo's uh, Sea of Tranquility uh, website. Uh, never, never comped for Priest. Always bought their CDs. Always bought their, uh, you know, a lot of uh, garb and paraphernalia and so on and so forth so it's never not my intention to uh, you know to do any copyright infringement so there's that have a good one everybody talk to you soon